Hi, and welcome to this part of our video sewing series where I'm teaching you how to construct a full gathered over skirt and its waistband for the skirt that we're making. Now, all previous parts of this video sewing series I'm going to list in the description box down below so you can follow along. This is part of a floral ensemble that we're making and by the end of this video if you follow along we will have completed one half of our floral ensemble. So if you like what you see and you want to learn how to make your own full gathered skirt, stick around. So now we're ready to begin actually making our gathered over skirt for our underskirt. And as you can sort of see here, I've laid out my overskirt fabric. I'm preparing to actually make the pattern piece. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and bother drafting on paper because we're going to be basically essentially cutting out a basic rectangle. So it's going to be fairly easy. And I'm teaching you how to do a rectangle for two reasons. Number one being I think it's just the easiest to teach and to do. And number two, my fabric here, if you'll notice, along this edge, okay, it happens to have something that I'm gonna treat as a border print, right? It has these dips and shallows along the floral edge here, right? And I'm just gonna cut right along that and leave the irregularity of the hem intact. Now, if I were working with a semi-circular uh, skirt that was gathered, I would not be able to achieve the same effect because parts of this would get trimmed away because the very nature of a semicircular skirt is that it's sort of rounded, right? And this is a straight edge here that I need to maintain. So if ever you're working with a border print or scallops or something at the hemline, then you, working with a straight edged rectangular pattern piece is your best bet. It's going to give you a nice effect. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and zoom you in here on this little diagram of uh, this little rectangular pattern piece right here where you can sort of see this gathered edge and a uh, description of the ratios here for the fabrics and the amount of fullness that you want. Not only is this going to sort of give you a gauge for how full do you want your gathers to be, how compact and tightly pressed do you want them to appear, you know, in the four to one ratio, you're going to have very tightly packed gathers, so you're going to have a very full skirt versus over here, like a one and a half you're gonna have very loose gathers. It's gonna be a very, very subtle effect, okay? But more importantly, whatever type of fabric you're working with, you need to keep in mind that the thicker the fabric is, the less you can compress it, right? The more bulky uh, the thickness of that fabric is going to be, so you just can't t pack it into a tighter space. But the thinner fabrics, like what we should be working with, which are, is the very ultra lightweight fabrics, the chiffons and mesh and voile, stuff like that, they're very thin and floaty, so you can really pack them in tightly to get that very compressed, gathered look. Okay, so for my purposes and the appearance that I want and the fabric that I'm using, I'm going to go for a three to one ratio. Now you may be asking, okay, well, how do you actually compute this gathering ratio and how does it relate to our pattern piece? Okay, well, the first step there is to take your measurement from the underskirt waistline. Okay, so remember the underskirt that we made in our previous video. We're going to go along, take a tape measure, and measure along that waistline seam right here, okay? And you want to use your underskirt waistline seam and not your actual waistline because you've probably added some ease to this underskirt, right? And we're gathering the overskirt to the underskirt, so we want those two to be simpatico. So what I did is I took my underskirt waistline measurement of 27 and a half inches and I multiplied it by three, okay? Because remember, I wanted that three to one gathering ratio. If you wanted a four, then you would multiply by four. If you wanted two and a half, you'd multiply by two and a half. And then that gave me 82 and a half inches, okay? Which computes to 2.3 yards, all right? That means I'm gonna need that length, that amount of yardage for that gathered edge of my overskirt in terms of width, okay? This right here, needs to be that long. So here I've made another little drawing sort of describing the layout of the rectangle I'm going to be gathering. Now first thing you'll notice is this is just one single rectangle. I'm going to be cutting out one piece for my entire skirt. And that's because as I mentioned 
I'm taking advantage of this border right here, so I'm actually doing a cross grain layout, okay? So as you can see here, the selvages of my fabric are there and here, and I'm gonna run my actual pattern piece straight along here. The, the width, that gathered edge, is going to run along the selvage, okay? So you, for, for, for the layout of my fabric, I have about three yards of fabric here. That will allow me to cut my pattern piece in one. Now, if you're doing a layout in which you're using the lengthwise grain, okay? So you're going to put that gathered edge from here to here, all right? Then the width of your fabric probably isn't going to accommodate something like, you know, 80 inches or whatnot. So you're gonna have to cut multiple pieces. And all that really means is you'll actually have to just put in some side seams, right? So what you'll do is you'll just take your full gathered edge waistline measurement that you computed, divide it in half, then you'll have a front piece and a back piece, right? And then take the one of those measurements, right? And divide it in half again for your back piece so that you'll have um, an opening in the back right? And then you'll have three rectangles. But this is going to be really simple. I suggest if you are working with a border print or you do have the yardage, a cross grain layout like this is always really easy to do in one full swoop. So now we're going to get into the little specifics here. As I mentioned, this top edge is going to be our waistline gathered edge, which is the actual waistline of your underskirt times whatever whatever gathered ratio you you actually desire in my case it was three and then that's going to be the same width as your hem because this is a rectangle right so whatever it is whatever uh, measurement you computed here it's going to be the same width at your hemline and then of course you're going to determine the vertical height of your rectangle and that is essentially just going to be your overskirt length, and you choose that. The only thing I would mention here is that you wanna make your overskirt obviously longer than your underskirt. I mean, even if you actually want them the same exact length, I would still make your overskirt slightly longer than your underskirt, so maybe a quarter of an inch to half an inch, just because you don't want your underskirt peeking out occasionally, right? Which can happen if you make them the same length. And then, all you're going to want to do is add in your seam allowances, right? And for me, obviously, the seam allowance at the waistline. And because I have one full rectangle, then I'll just add uh, 5 eighths of an inch on either center back seam. Okay? And if you have side seams, obviously, you'll want to add those side seams in. And then the hem. Now, because as I mentioned, I'm actually going to be using a raw edge for my fabric, I'm not even going to need a hem, all right? So, but if you're working with a voile or chiffon or something and you wanna do a narrow rolled hem, for instance, just tack on a little bit of extra fabric so it'll allow you to do that. And then you wanna be sure to mark some key points on your fabric. Now you can go ahead, just cut out your entire rectangular pattern piece or your separate pieces, as I mentioned, if you happen to have like three pieces, and make sure that you mark the center front and the side seams, which I have here in little dashed lines. These locations are obviously easy to find if you do have a few separate pattern pieces. If you're working with one full rectangle, it's also easy. All you need to do is once you cut this out, fold it in half, automatically, bam, you have your center front. Fold it into quarters, bam, you have your side seams, okay? So just go ahead and mark those because when we're gathering, we're gonna pin the center front of this rectangle to the center front of our underskirt and the side seams here that we'll mark, we're gonna pin to the side seams of our underskirt. And when we gather, it's gonna help us achieve really even gathers, okay? So that's, that's the purpose of that. And you also might want to, on your center back, uh, put in a little notch where your zipper stop of your underskirt was the same length. So for me, as in my case, it was about nine inches down. So just go ahead and mark there to ensure you leave your opening. Now the actual technical way uh, to make this pattern piece would be to actually drop the center back from the waistline about a quarter of an inch, okay? And taper it to the side seam, all right? So it would be slightly lower, less length in the back 
than the rest of the skirt, okay? Um, and that's just because generally the body is a little more curvaceous on the front than the rear, okay? So that extra quarter inch um, subtracting here just allows for having a bit of a straighter po posterior than the sort of lower abdominal area, which can be a bit more curvaceous, and so a little bit of extra fabric is allowed there. But that's completely up to you. It's not a huge difference. You can get away with doing this. I would say unless you do, you do worry that you have a prominent abdomen, or it can even work the reverse if you have a very prominent posterior, then maybe you definitely don't want to subtract the quarter inch in the back, okay? So just giving you that little tip there. But a basic gathered skirt, just like this should work fine. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to begin cutting out our skirt. So now, as you can see, I've gone ahead, cut out my pattern piece, and I've done two rows of gathering stitches on that seam allowance. So one right on the seam and the other about a quarter inch above it, a fat quarter of an inch above it. And the more obviously gathering lines you put in, if you even did a third one, say in between there, the easier it will be to gather your skirt. That's always a good tip. And this is the center back, and I've gone ahead and put pins where my zipper pull will end on my underskirt, reminding me that I'm going to leave this area open, so I'm not gonna stitch it. And then, as I mentioned, I've gone ahead and marked and put some pins where my side seams will be, and where my center front will be, and my other side seam is over there. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start gathering this and pinning it to my underskirt. So as you can see here, I've actually finished gathering my overskirt and I've pinned it in place to my underskirt, ensuring as even a gathering dispersal as I can. Now the important thing I wanna let you know here is in this back area around the zipper. Remember that we tacked on our seam allowances for the overskirt. You want to make sure that those seam allowances overhang the zipper, okay? So I have like my 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance not included in the gathering and it's left hanging out here. At this stage, or you could even do this even before you start gathering as a matter of fact, um, you want to use whatever finishing technique you plan on using for the raw edge of your seam allowance for your overskirt, and you want to do that now, all the way down the actual seam for on both sides of, the, of those seam allowances. So if you're just going to fold it under like a quarter inch, then you would do that all the way down on both sides. And we're doing that now because the next step before we actually secure these two skirts together with stitching is that we actually want to create a finished seam at the waistline. And what I mean by that is we're just going to like pop out this pin here, okay? And I'm just going to actually take the full seam allowance if it's already been folded under say like a quarter inch or something just to finish the actual raw seam of that seam allowance. Then I'm going to create my actual finished seam, that 5 eighths inch seam, take it in and make sure that when I fold it in it sits flush against that zipper, okay? You want it sitting evenly against it. And then we can go ahead and we can stitch these two skirts together such that they sit like that. And we're doing that now because the underskirt has been finished separately from the overskirt. Okay, I know you're used to finishing skirts at the same time, but because we didn't actually, we're not sticking this seam allowance in with the zipper, we're gonna have to finish it separately. And we wanna make sure it's finished now before we actually attach the waistband. So as you can see, I've turned in those seam allowances on the center back seam all the way down, and I've gone ahead and stitched that center back seam up to the zipper point, and these, edges here between the zipper and the waistline seam are turned but they're going to remain open for now. You will notice now that I finished them like so, they actually sort of have a tendency to overlap 
right? Because of all the fullness of the gathering. That's why whenever you do a gathered skirt, it's really easy to sort of leave the overskirt separate from the underskirt because you can just attach some little snaps here and just, you know, for a closure mechanism, zip up the underskirt and just snap this closed. Or you don't even necessarily need to, you could leave it like this. But if you want something a little more secure, we can always put in some snaps in the end. And now we're ready to make and attach the waistband. So now we're actually ready to begin working on our waistband. And as you can see, I've already drafted mine here. And here I've laid out some information so you can draft yours as well. So the first thing we'll wanna determine is our waistband length. And for that, you're gonna need your actual skirt waist measurement. And we've already determined that. For me, if you'll recall, it was 27 and a half inches. And then we're gonna add on our underlay or our underlap. And all waistbands have an underlay or underlap. One side is going to overlap the other side, okay, like so. So you're gonna wanna compute what that underlap is going to be. And for us, I'm gonna say we're gonna do a 1.5 inch underlap. That's a good uh, skirt waistband underlap to have. And then we're gonna add on our seam allowance all right, and I'm gonna use a narrower seam allowance. I've been using 5 eighths of an inch throughout this project, but uh, if you wanna keep things consistent, go ahead and use 5 eighths of an inch as well. So I'm gonna need two seam allowances, one for either end of the skirt. So you multiply that seam allowance by two, that's one inch for me. You're gonna take all those measurements, add them up, and I get a waistband that needs to be 30 inches long, including my seam allowances. So that's gonna be the long edges of my rectangle that I'm going to make, 30 inches. Then we're gonna calculate the waistband width, all right? And for this, we're gonna actually say, well, how wide do I want my waistband to be? The finished width, as I've noted here. And for my finished width, I'm thinking one and a half inches is pretty good. You can have something anywhere from about one inch to one and three quarter inches. If you start to go wider, you start to need to add curvature to your waistband. I'm gonna go with one and a half inches, and that means that I'm actually gonna double that width, all right? I'm gonna multiply my one and a half inch by two because, as you can see here, I've gone ahead and put in a fold line. So my actual waistband width, minus seam allowances at the bottom here, is gonna be that wide, all right? And that saves me having to actually stitch two pieces together. It's like a self-facing, right? I can just fold it over and I have the front and the reverse side, okay? So that's why we're gonna double our finished width. And that for me then comes out to three inches wide. And then I'm obviously going to add on my seam allowances half an inch again. Once again, my waistband of my skirt is even 5 eighths of an inch. So if you want to be consistent and make it easier to attach, you would use 5 eighths of an inch um, if that's what you happen to be using. And multiply that by two because we have two sides that we need to add allowances to. And that's one inch. And then we're going to take those measurements, three and one for me. And I get something that is needing to be four inches wide vertically. So now I have a rectangle that I will draft that will be 30 inches, wide, 30 inches long by four inches wide. The next step is to add in your critical information, seam allowances, put those in. And as I mentioned, your fold line, all you're gonna wanna do is take your pattern piece, fold it in half such that those edges are flush together, and then draw a line down the center. You'll have your fold line, which will be your finished width that you'll wanna mark on your fabric. And then you're gonna wanna add in your underlap. All right, so for my pattern piece, I've marked it on the left-hand side. It's gonna be my left-hand interior because I'm gonna obviously put this pattern piece down on the reverse side of my fabric. And that's gonna be where I want this underlap to be on my left-hand side when I turn it over like this because that way the right-hand side of my fabric is gonna come over and it's going to meet over here like that. And this will be the underlap on my left-hand side. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna mark your underlap measurement, which we said we were gonna do at 1.5 inches. You're just gonna come on over from your seam allowance, mark 1.5 and draw a vertical line. And be sure definitely to transfer that to your fabric. So we have our little waistband all prepared and now we can cut some fabric 
and start actually constructing and attaching the waistband. So here the waistband has been cut out and prepared, ready to be sewn. I've gone ahead and interfaced my underlay, my silk charmeuse underlay, and then I've hand basted my overlay. So here you can sort of see a bit more what's going on from the front. My overlay fabric hand basted over my yellow silk charmeuse, which I've interfaced with uh, medium weight interfacing. Now you needn't construct your waistband as I've done. You don't have to use both fabrics for your waistband. You can use a contrasting fabric. You can just use your underlay fabric that you'll interface. Uh, that's completely up to you, right? But I'm just so in love with this fabric. I wanted to use it everywhere. <laughs> So now it's ready to be sewn. And the first thing that we're going to do is actually take care of the ends. So for the left-hand side of the waistband, we're, what we're going to do is right edges together. We're going to fold this over and we're going to stitch from the underlap vertical line that we made along our seam allowances and then trim your seam allowances, all right? And then on the other side, we're just gonna fold over once again, and we're just going to stitch down that center back seam on the right hand side of our waistband, all right? And then we're going to and trim the edges. And then when you flip it out, you'll have um, a waistband that's finished on either edge so that we can insert our finished edge skirt inside the waistband. So I've attached my waistband and I've pressed and trimmed the seam allowance a bit on that waistband there. And you can sort of see how it fits together at the edges now. Once I inserted it, you see how since we finished the edge of the skirts and then finished the edges of the waistband separately and then inserted them, we can still come out with a nice finished look, okay? next step is just to go ahead and begin slip stitching the inner waistband down onto the waistband seam on the inside. So the waistband is now completely stitched down and I've completely slip stitched the inside down. Now our next order of business is to add some hooks and eyes to the back, right? We'll add some eyes to the underlap right here on the left side and some hooks to our right side such that when they meet at that center back, our skirt will end up closing just like so. Now what we're going to do is hang the skirt overnight on a dress form and see how the bias drops of either your overskirt or your underskirt before we get into hemming. Here's the skirt hanging and I'm actually working on the overskirt hem right now, still waiting for the underskirt to drop a bit before I hem it. And you can see that I've uh, made some adjustments to my overskirt hem. Um, first off, I'll say that I added some horsehair braid about three inches wide to the hem just to give my skirt a bit more bounce there. And now you'll see that I have some little flowers and some leaves pinned in place along the hem and if you'll recall I said that I really wanted sort of an irregular border or like a border print on my edge and I thought I would further dramatize that by actually taking my original fabric and chopping out little pieces of leaves and flowers and sort of pinning them along the hem of my overskirt such that they hang a bit over here and there just to give it some added 3D dimension, some irregularity, and hopefully some continuity as well. So I've now finished the overskirt hem all those floral and leaf motifs that I had pinned down, I have hand stitched with invisible thread and I really like the effect. I think they look a part of the fabric, but they still provide a little extra dimension and a little extra depth on the hemline. I like how they dip in and out. So that is done and I've already gone ahead and I've allowed the bias to drop from of my underskirt right when I hung it and I went ahead and trimmed it and then I just did a narrow hem as you can sort of see here and I went ahead and top stitched it because it's an underskirt so not a big deal uh, 
for the top stitching. I didn't need to go ahead and blind hem it. And then on the back here, you'll see that I've also gone ahead and below the waistband, remember we had this little bit of an opening, right? And I've just gone ahead and inserted some snaps on that seam allowance, about three of them, okay? And you see how that just sort of ensures that when this is moving about, that that's gonna remain closed and you still have the uh, invisible zipper there of the underskirt and this is kept separate, so it really allows for maximum fluidity of the overskirt. So thank you for joining me. I hope that you learned something useful and that you're working on your own beautiful gathered skirt. And since this is only one half of the floral ensemble that we'll be making in this video series, I also hope that you'll join me for my next video where I'll teach you how to draft your own peplum blouse. Hope to see you then. Bye-bye.